as I mentioned in the previous episode. Last few years in digital cartography were very intense. In today's episode, we'll see some of the options that we have on the market when it comes to software. Choosing the right uh, software is right. software piece program is very important as there are different tools for different jobs and not many of us can afford to spend money on everything that appears on the market. Also, using a fork to eat jelly is not the best idea and it's pretty similar in cartography. If you want to build a small battle map, you don't need software that creates fractal-like universes. If you want to create a one-time continent map, you may actually be fine using a free tool and tweaking it to your needs. So before picking a tool, ask yourself some questions that can help you decide what tool you actually need for your specific needs and for your budget. First question, how much time do you have for mapping? If you have a lot of time, you might actually need more than one program and you might want to choose a program that has a steeper learning curve, but is more powerful in the long run. The easiest solutions are on the other hand, good for those that don't have much time and know that they'll jump in for mapping just occasionally. Second question, how much do you want to spend on making a map? Now, obviously I know the answer, uh, nothing, but uh, that's not an option, I'm afraid. You will have to invest one of two things, either your time or your money. You can create digital maps without spending a penny but to do so, you will have to spend more time on it. And time is money from where I come. Um, there's nothing stopping you from making maps in the simplest graphic programs without any assets. You can also use advanced yet still free graphic programs, graphic processing programs um, with more usability, but it will still take you much more time and expertise. So the bottom line is, you will need to figure out what what do you have time or money to spend on uh, on the program that you want to choose a third question do you want to make maps of worlds continents cities battle maps the natural answer would be hey all of the above but uh, that's because we are a greedy species and there are programs like that, but the learning curve of them and the outcome you can expect are potentially way below the desired level. So consider what, what will be uh, your, um, your primal or prime focus point. A very important thing in map making is the ease in which you can or cannot add your own images to files, uh, to, to, to your creations, your own assets. Thus, on a continent level, you might actually be okay with the predefined styles and symbols you'll find, but more specific maps, battle maps, they might need um, specific assets. And this is the moment where, uh, where the question of how easy it is to add your own assets, images to the program comes into play. Fourth question, do you want to make animated or static maps? Currently, VTTs, virtual tabletops, uh, be they in person or not, they give amazing possibilities. We are by no way restricted to top-down, grid-first view anymore. Uh, the technology that allows a more dynamic content creation is there, but it's often overvalued. I myself love animations, and they do convey this wow effect for many people. But it may be just a quirky embellishment for you. Uh, deciding on what you want, if you want to create animations and video maps, restric restricts your software choices dramatically, so take that into account. Fifth question. Are you using the maps in a VTT or in person? The maps uh, you will create will be digital, um, and a proper paper export is not something that all developers see as a default option. So if you're using, on the other hand, if you're using a fancy VTT, check what limitations it has. Some fancy 3D generators may be real fun to look at and build, but they produce grossly huge files that most VTTs won't accept as source material. On the other hand, some of the programs I'll show you in a bit work as both cartography tools and VTTs, so you might want to try, out, uh, try them out before you invest in two separate products. And finally, sixth thing, how do you define a good map? 
does it look good or is it uh, is it a map uh, that functions as just like a measuring grid? The difference is huge. It's like comparing a dry erase mat with a grid, um, with just a grid or a painted version of, of a map or a digital map uh, to terrain that is painted by the game, game master, created and painted by the game master. So what makes a good map? Does it load fast in the VTT? Is it animated? What effect do you want to achieve? Many of the maps that you can see online are not actually created one of the many programs that we'll see today, but are created in Photoshop or other graphic processing programs. Very often they are drawn by hand or created by using custom assets that are copyrighted and restricted for the creator alone. So what I'm saying is uh, creating world-class maps takes enormous dedication and it's a full-time job. 99% of us won't get there, but it's still, for, it's still worth reminding, I feel. Five years ago, virtual mapping industry was relatively poor. In recent years witnessed a boom in TTRPG content, especially D&D content, and with that also a fantastic influx of new uh, software pieces for us to use appeared. New users mean more drive to create more software, so we're actually on a rising wave and I bet we can expect more programs to appear in the coming years. Today, we will look at some of the tools available for us. This is in no way, uh, in, in no way this is a finished list. Um, I think it's pretty compre comprehensible, uh, but it's not finished. I divided it into a few sections. And in the end, I'll also show you some subjective choices of things that I use personally. Before we start, just a fair warning, this is a list of 30 something uh, different apps, pages and so on. So I'm not going to delve into each and every one of them in detail. That would be like a three hours long video and nobody would watch it. Uh, so we're just going to skim through on the different products. You're going to see how they look like and what they can do. Uh, but I'm not in any way trying to build a tutorial or anything like that. It's just a way to give you a list with some visual uh, enhancements. So uh, let's jump in. First, we will see uh, Watabo. Watabo. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Watabo is uh, is a generator type of um, of app. It has different types of things it can generate. Uh, the most popular is probably the Medieval City Fantasy City generator. So it's really easy to use. This is this is actually it. This is already a generated. Uh, a generated city. Um, you can fiddle around with it. There, it has a few different, uh, also a few different options. If you want to build a new city, you can do it like this, or you can warp the city by changing the outlines. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really worth uh, worth checking out. It uh, I know that it saved a lot of people's uh, lives <laughs> by um, being really really accessible, and it runs in browsers, so it's really something that is um, that is definitely uh, worth uh, worth looking at and you can uh, get additional stuff if you support the generator uh, with uh, with a patreon uh, account next up will be um, the Nortantis um, which is basically much more um, simple I'd say uh, it's a generator for uh, continents it if you can see the uh, continents over here it generates it does create a pretty good job with the coastlines, with the overall shapes. It's uh, pretty, pretty neat. Um, you can also uh, see uh, that it's uh, downloadable, so it has, it does, it, it does run on your computer without you needing to be connected to the um, uh, to the internet. So that is also pretty, pretty neat. Next up is the very popular uh, donjon uh, or donjon um, generator it has a multitude of things it can uh, and can create uh, including demographics including uh, dungeons and so on and so on if you want to construct a word um, we are we are position one in the queue so we'll see our world in a second or two uh, in the meantime i do emphasize that this is uh this is quite of a harvester when it comes to um, when it comes to generators because this does it all basically, and it's all um, open uh, open well not open source but it's free, uh, so you can uh, use it without any without any 
cache on your site. Uh, as you can see, I am already in. It's creating a fractal world. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we will see another generator and we'll get back to John John um, in a second. Let's see the Asgard's Fantasy Map Generator. This is a beautiful generator because it creates really, 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 really nice maps with a very there's a lot of um, a lot of things you can do you can create a new map with a style let's say that the style is watercolor and we want um, we want borders to be province borders and we want the stroke to be blue and let's add a, a blur five here uh, and let's add options uh, or in tools um yeah this is the height map right now it's why i can and am able to uh, change with with the sliders with the options all, all around here basically this is a huge huge thing uh if i would like to make some more mountains over here look how how um how accessible it is um and now if i exit the customization there should be a higher range over here you don't see it because i Picked the wrong map, but yeah, uh, you get the get the idea. Is my fractal world here? It is done. This is what the um, what dungeon generator, fantasy world generator created. It has uh, basically uh, everything that you can uh, imagine. It has ruins. Uh, it tells you where and what is. You can download the map page and so on and so on. So it's really really nice. Next generator is Dave's Mapper. Dave's Mapper is again a generator that um, is free and runs in your browser. So it's uh, again very accessible. Uh, we can generate, for example, a village. It does have this specific hand sketched style, which some of us might like and some of us might not. So uh, take that also into account. If we generate a city, it's going to be slightly bigger. We can fiddle it around and uh, we can change swap places. We can basically, again, it's uh, there's a lot of things that you can create over here. Um, you can choose which style you're interested in mostly. So if I'm going to do a science fiction ship, I might be only interested in David Millar uh, or David Millar art style. And this is it. Uh, and if I'm not satisfied with it, so I'm just going to swap it around and maybe there's something uh, that that will fit. So again, a fine, uh, easy to use tool that is pretty sleek uh, and pretty uh, and pretty intuitive once you get a little bit of a hold of it. And again, I did mention that not everyone needs a very photorealistic style. Maybe such maps are uh, are maps exactly for you. So you would need to find your own style over here. Next is Gozi's Wilderness Maps. Um, let's generate a small map with low foliage, including storms and ruins and paths and without a grid. Create map and there it is, just like that. It's not the prettiest thing. Um, make another one. Again, it's it's something. It's not the prettiest thing, but it might, might actually work. Uh, if uh, if if you fiddle around with it, and in the gallery you see that people did create some interesting maps over here, including uh, including a isometric map, which I actually didn't know that it is possible in here. But yeah, each tool has a learning curve, and even generators do. And the last generator on my list is the Mythweavers uh, dungeon generator. Um, I'm not gonna fiddle around with the with the settings. Just generate dungeon. With current seed, and as you can see, this is the most basic dry erase mat type of uh, type of dungeon. Although it does give you a lot of uh, additional information, like what is where, uh, what type of doors, what type of traps, um, what's the difficulties, and so on, and so on. So there's a lot of additional interesting things uh, on these uh, on this um, uh, on this page. Okay, so now uh, we finished the generators. Let's go to uh, pixel and low fidelity maps. Um, I'm not sure how I should actually call it because these are not. Uh, I'm calling. I'm having this distinction between low fidelity and high fidelity maps. And by low fidelity, I mean that they are they leave more space to your imagination. They are more more basic 
in the style but that doesn't mean that they are worse in anything okay so we are now at deepnight.net uh, with deep night games um, if you go to rpg map you will see that there's a generator that you can run in browser over here if we click it we're gonna get a, uh, a map um, now this is something that um, that I fiddled around a little bit earlier create new map um, let's see we can have cavern walls like this over here and maybe here and uh, on top of that we add diagonal walls uh, over here and now let's say generic heavy furniture uh, Oh, I didn't choose the object. Yeah, so uh, there's again uh, some options around here that you can use. Um, I'm not very proficient in this, sadly, but uh, I do see the allure of this uh, of this uh, tool. Um, no map. Let's add some heavy rocks over here. Now let's add a fence. I mean, this is in no way will this be a pretty map, uh, but I'm also not trying to uh, trying to build a new map, uh, a pretty map. So this this would be functional if I would if I would focus on doing something that makes sense over here. So this is a very very uh, pretty and and curious map. And again, um, look at what people did in these maps uh, in this uh, generator. Um, let's check beach house. This is not a bad map. I I did uh, I did con I do consider it still a low fidelity map because of the art style over here, but it's pretty robust when it comes to the uh, meritorical input of the map. Next one is Worldographer. World World <laughs> Worldographer is um, is a hex generator map or hex um, or hex uh, creator. Again, it's not high fidelity because of the style that you can uh, find over here, but uh, it's pretty, pretty dope um, when it comes to options. And it's again, a down downloadable, uh, downloadable um, package. You can have the pro version and, um, and with that, you have additional battle map, dungeon map licenses and so on and so on. So additional um, additional stuff let's see the examples of what you can build with worldographer again world maps pretty basic i'd say um created with a hex grid it's not something that i would use in my maps in my games but um but yeah i have <laughs> i have a different idea of what is pretty and what is not um, basic city maps this is not a bad map uh, to be honest uh, Again, not something that I would use personally, but it's not bad. And dungeons, the low fidelity dungeons that look very, very flat, but still again something that you can you can use. Next up, we have HexTML. Uh, HexTML is uh, again running in a browser, and it's not a generator per se. It's more something that allows you to create hex maps. Uh, very basic, but still hex maps with symbols that you want. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty interesting. They have uh, they have types of terrain, different types of terrain. They have different uh, different symbols, um, colors, customization. Uh, there's also a tutorial on each of these sites that I'm showing you. There is a tutorial, so it's not like you're left uh, left alone. Um, yeah, that's basically it. That's 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 what you can do over here. It's uh, it's uh, over here. You have the visuals, additional visuals or not. Uh, that's basically what you can do with it. Sometimes people do need hex maps for their crawls or other things, so uh, you might find this one useful. Uh, Mipui is a very old, I believe, type of uh, dungeon creator. Uh, it's still rendering. Um, so yeah, this is a very, very old uh, or known uh, map creator. Um, it allows you to build different uh, types of dungeons mainly. Uh, it does have some options, although 
I wouldn't say it's my it is the most intuitive tool. It does have this uh, it does have this specific interesting style that you can use and you can see right now that this is the cross hatched styles that um, that is pretty popular especially lately um, but yeah resize map let's resize it oh, I can't resize it um, and again each tool has its own pros and cons and because of that this tool for example while it may generate uh, some interesting well not generate where you may create some interesting maps in this tool a specific tool for me the ui is a little bit too wonky i do like to fiddle with software but if i have to fiddle uh too long it does lose the allure uh for me um but again you could find something that uh that you find suitable for yourself also in map ui and again there's no harm in using a free uh, software or free app. Um, okay, what do we got now? We got the RPG Inferno. Let's create an RPG map. Map is rendering. It gives you, again, a low fidelity um, map that it auto generated, but you could add your own. Like, let's add a ditch over here as a trap. And you could add some trees behind this uh, fence over here. Um, now let's go back to icons and we'll add a tower or a, um, or a, a turret of sorts over here. And um, let's add a barrel. So again, you could potentially use this for a low fidelity map if you only need a basic, uh, basic grid with some very simple or basic uh, visuals over here and you can uh, you have the layers over here you have the safety PNG so you can just download it and print it if you want now we have Tiamat the on rpgobjects.com um yeah this is a biggie it's uh, it's been around for some time now and uh, it's it's fine because you can uh, build basically um, from pre-made um from pre-made structures although it is kind of intimidating because there's a there's an amazing amount of assets over here so uh, for example if i select only dungeon i have one 1173 assets over here and you will need to uh just see them if you if you're interested you would need to just scroll through them so that's quite an errand uh if you ask me you can see that they are very very similar very often they are very similar uh, i did copy the a for example whoops um so yeah uh they're very similar very often so it's um uh, it's quite intimidating for a for a tool that you can just bump in into on the internet uh and above you have the tools in which you can among others save it to your desktop and the last thing is a very very basic a very uh, simplified uh, low fidelity creator or cartography tool which is called uh, campaign it's grid mapper sog svg and again, again you can save it to your uh, to your computer but it runs in browser you select what you want so if you want to build a simple uh, couple of rooms in a in a cave or whatever else so you can add staircases you can add up down staircases you can have secret doors doors that are regular or uh, or other things it does have a potential of this uh dry erase mat uh and if i would read all the instructions over here maybe maybe it would work slightly better than what i did before uh second that would be all when it comes to this these low fidelity and pixel art uh, programs now next stop is general software and by general software i mean any software that didn't fit into other types of, uh, of software that um, that you'll find um, let's start with uh, pyromancers dungeon painter online um, again we'll see what we can build on um, on steam these are things that were built with um with dungeon painter uh dungeon painter studio uh pretty dope i must say um 
these look really good dungeon painter studio is something that we can uh, use uh, offline or online if you want to download it you just need to click on the download it and that's that's basically it uh it's also available on steam uh so if we check how much it costs it's 53 a lot so around 10 bucks i believe um let's just see how the dungeon painter studio uh looks like um it's gonna be a real quick overview of the 2.0 version of uh, dungeon painter studio so you have your assets over here and you put them on uh on the map wherever you want it does look pretty okay i must say it's uh it's not um i do see limitations and i don't like the art style at all it's not my type of art style but uh but it might be something very very interesting to use or have it also does seem to have a, a rather very slight learning curve so that's also something worth always worth uh worth checking out um So that would be Dungeon Painter Studio. Next up, we got Incarnate. Incarnate is a um, is a software that runs um, in your browser. Um, it's very known, very well known, especially uh, for the last year or two years. They did change a lot in the software itself, and they added some additional city assets and village assets. I did notice that uh, a lot of people uh, shifted towards Incarnate because I would say that Incarnate has the lowest learning curve or the the slightest learning curve from most or any program that you can find when it comes to mapping so for those of you that want some program that is simple that is um fast incarnate might be actually your uh your choice and again it is something that runs in your browser so no um no additional programs that you have to download or use or whatever else the drawback the huge huge drawback over here is um is that it is uh free um sorry for my cat it's uh, free only to up to 10 maps only up to 2k and 900 uh assets that's not enough you, you have to believe me you will want to have around at least 10,000 assets um yeah and you have these two plans if you are a paid user um depending on your budget this might be okay or not um i do not like subscription based programs so i wouldn't choose it basically but um as said it's if you don't uh, want to uh, spend a lot of time learning a new program if you just want to jump in and build a map you can easily build well maybe not easily easily but you can build things like this um in incarnate without much issue Next up is Dungeon Fog. Now, Dungeon Fog is a something uh, definitely different because Dungeon Fog is um, Dungeon Fog is a huge, huge program. It's uh, it's not only a battle map editor. It's not only a, a general uh, dungeon editor. It's uh, also one of the many program uh, programs or apps uh, that are connected with the um, Project Deus. Project Deus is uh, is a huge thing that is basically uh, the idea behind Project Deus is to create a software that is basically for everything it builds you your whole world and universes and it's able to go all the way down to the small uh to the smallest um to the smallest parts like dungeons and art style that you'll find here are pretty pretty dope uh, uh this is also important for those of you that don't play classic uh, medieval style games you do have uh more cyberpunkish assets over here or styles so that's also worth taking into account um I did use Dungeon Fog for some times. I didn't like the fact that it worked on um, in my browser. I'm not a fan of browsers, uh, of browser apps. It does, uh, it's it's quite problematic for me. But uh, the prices are pretty steep, sadly. So you have a $99 or 99 euros over here annually for the subscription. Um, you can have a monthly or annually uh subscription if you don't use a commercial if you don't use your maps for commercials or for commercial uh, uses and you have the on demand one month or three months or whatever else that's also something worth uh worth checking there's also a free um a free uh tier but it only has uh, fantasy assets and 
those again won't be enough and you have low res watermarks and so on so so you can try it out for free and see if you like it maybe if you do it's worth um it's worth buying next up is i think that's the most popular tool uh when it comes to cartography is dungeon draft by megasplute um we will get back to megasplute a little bit later um uh, because they have also another type of uh of software um, that they produced earlier dungeon draft is its younger brother or sister or sibling um i think dungeon draft hit the exact spot on the market with a very very nice price it's uh, it's a one-time buy uh, if you want to purchase it it costs only 20 bucks it's not a subscription based uh, in, uh, software you get integration with forgotten adventures assets which is marvelous because forgotten adventures are um are one of the main asset providers uh, in the ttrpg fantasy uh, uh fantasy cartography they do state that they have unintimidating UI. I would discuss that. I do own um, Dungeon Draft and I don't use it. <laughs> I don't use it because uh, for me, their UI is sadly not something that I find pleasure uh, using. So while they do have some great blending tools or their line tool is really nice, as you can see right now on the screen, um, I don't think that uh, that the UI is unintimidating. On the contrary, I think their UI needs a huge overhaul. And maybe then I wouldn't get back to Dungeon Draft. But still, uh, this is the most popular tool. It's not... Uh, especially um, it's not especially pricey it's relatively cheap um, it's a one-time buy you can import assets although importing assets into dungeon draft is quite a hassle if you ask me um, you also get this uh, this style that maybe fits uh, some people and other is not um i don't like how the library looks works here i don't like how the customization works here and i i'm not a fan of the fact that there is not enough flexibility in this tool um but again this is one of the most popular and you will find a lot of people that would be uh be happy to help you with this tool uh, they have a huge community on reddit and others so this would be one of the main uh, main places to look and now the older brother being wonder draft i also use wonder draft uh, as opposed to dungeon draft wonder draft is kind of abandoned i feel uh i i, I think they don't uh focus so much on wonder draft as they do on dungeon draft that is mainly because dungeon draft is a hit while wonder draft is a, a software piece for making continents and uh, worlds so it's not the most used type of uh, cartography uh, software as i mentioned earlier there are different types of maps and continent maps are seldom made because these are uh, these are made for um for books and for games but they're made once and you don't fiddle around with them as opposed to the battle maps which can make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds the ui is similarly not the sharpest if you ask me and i didn't notice any changes throughout the years uh the last few years that i uh, that i used wonder draft although uh i didn't also find any better tool to make uh intuitive fast uh continent maps so uh so wonder draft is definitely something worth uh, worth noticing and again it's a one-time purchase it's 30 bucks as opposed to 20 bucks with uh, the with dungeon draft um, and it doesn't give you uh, doesn't give you many options when it comes to building anything else except for uh, except for continents next up we have dungeon scroll now dungeon scroll is something that runs in browser but it's so fast that you won't even notice that there's something uh, there's something problematic with it let's just draw something real quick uh this was i think it was advertised one time uh, on uh, in the live play D, &D show uh as something uh, that the dm there uses and i think that they uh, that, that that made this tool uh, really be in the eyes of many many uh, many people. You can have a you can have a connected cave system with a, like an know, forgotten temple or whatever else this is, and um, yeah, it's basically very simple to use. That's that's basically it. Um, 
different types of uh, rooms can be built over here. Um, there's also some options what you can what you want to do right now if you want to build um, if you want to build or if you, if you want to erase um, there are shadows grids extras but it doesn't allow you to build many it, it's like not it doesn't allow you to build objects it has a very cool mirror tool uh, that you can use to generate some even more uh, wicked wicked or random looking maps um, yeah, I mean, this is something that definitely is worth uh, worth using. If you would generate a door over here, it would generate a door. It doesn't have objects, but it does have a lot of other things that are really, really interesting. And uh, for quick generation of things that are for print, this would be really, really a tool of my um, of my choice. Next up is World Spinner. Um, I didn't try World Spinner. It's uh, something that you can try out if you sign up uh, with your email. You can see that the creations that they uh, that you can do in World Spinner are basically continent maps. Although if you check out the gallery, you will notice that it's not only continents; it's also um, also battle maps. Like for example, uh, for example, here you have a map of, uh, of a cave and um, and a sunken or half sunken ship um, and this looks pretty good but I'm kind of feel that this uh, is um, this is also something that was fiddled with afterwards in a, in a general uh, creator uh, the general uh, graphic processing software there's not much um, there's not much um, info on the, on the on the page itself um, so it's hard to say uh, what it could be Entice. Let's check uh, World Spinner and go. So, if we go to if we search for World Spinner and see uh, the images on Google's on Google, um, we'll see a relatively similar, um, relatively similar list of things that people built. So it seems that World Spinner is, uh, for now at least, a, a good tool for building continents if you want to try something uh, relatively niche. Um, but there are other tools that I think I would recommend in this situation. Okay, now we have the um, now we have the map RPG mapper or Dungeons and Dragons map maker. Um, it is again, uh, if you want a premium access, uh, you will have additional slots for your maps, and um, and you have an unlimited uh, access to the sprites. What have they called the images over here? And if you look at the map samples over here. Uh, let them load in. I wouldn't call them high fidelity because they have this very, very flat uh, feeling in them, mostly, although not all of them. But they are, uh, yeah, it looks it looks uh, pretty, pretty okay. Let's see, make a map in two minutes. It's loading. Okay, so it generated a map for me. It's uh, I already see that I'm not the biggest fan. I'm not going to be the biggest fan of this uh, of this software. Uh, let's select an object. Um, if I would be, oh god, it's, it's not the worst uh, that I've seen. It's not also not the best that I've seen. Uh, it does lack a lot of functionality, but I don't see any um, any price uh, over here. Oh, the price was over here. Um, so maybe maybe if you have a premium content uh, access, it would be it would be more enticing or more alluring. For five bucks a month, I don't think this is something that I would like to uh, to use, especially looking at the map samples that I have over here. Next up is uh, Steam Arcane Mapper. Okay, so. Uh, this is something that is in early access. Um, it has mixed reviews, sadly. Uh, so um, people don't really recommend it right now. But looking at the style and looking at how things are done in the program itself, it does look pretty promising. I'm going to be honest. It doesn't look bad. Um, the fact that you have a really nice working light system, assets look also more 3d so it's not a very low fidelity low fidelity map um again you have this issue with the ui i believe so there's this library on the right side and and you have to right click to vertically or horizontally flip something and so on and so on so it's uh, it does look like a 
like something that could uh, could get a little slightly or more than slightly improved um, by the creators. Um, the next thing, um, how much does it cost? Uh, it doesn't cost anything for now, so so there's that. Um, next up, we have Illwinter's floor plan generator. Uh, again, a Steam thing, very cheap. It's twenty five dollars, so it's like. Uh, possibly around five bucks for you um for that price <laughs> you get the quality that you get uh it's not hor horrible it's not horrific but for example this is pretty cool um for a printable map if you print out your maps this is in my opinion better than than a dry erase uh dry erase map um the price is ridiculously reasonable for the software provided. The UI and what you can do with the program are easy to quickly understand. Make maps so easily almost requires no effort. Yeah, it doesn't look like it would require any effort, honestly. It's uh, if you don't have many options, you also don't have many things you can um, you can uh, mix up or or uh, make troublesome. Uh, Dungeon Painter Studio. This is a biggie. Uh, we already seen Dungeon Painter Studio, but we've seen it on uh, on the website. This is now the Steam version of it. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's it's one of the bigger software programs, but I don't feel that the style is something that I would like. Um, I do know, however, that DPS is something that allows you to import your uh, images and your files pretty easily. So mm, it might be worth uh, worth checking out. All right, and the last thing that I have over here is the hub byte, which is the only isometric builder over here, which is very uh, unique. You can see that it look, works really, really easy over here. Uh, whoever is using it right now is building a building an isometric little room um, with the tool uh, provided. And over here, you can see that if you work long enough, you can create a really, really, really pretty map. Um, if you've never tried working on isometric maps, I do encourage you to do so because it's a whole different experience. You can see me making one of the isometric maps in a video, in an other video that I made. Um, this is, yeah, this is really good. Actually, I, I'm, I'm considering uh, whether or not uh, to buy it, it's made only by two uh, by two guys. Um, let's see. Unfortunately, the license is pretty pretty pricey. Um, and if you would like a pro license, that's that's pretty insane. For uh, for what you get, I'm not sure if I will use this tool for now, uh, but maybe maybe in the future. Right now, let's go to the big stuff. First up, we have Campaign Cartographer and Pro Fantasy in general. Now, Pro Fantasy is a developer, or I'm not even sure if I can call them developers. Uh, Campaign Cartographer existed in, in the 90s, uh, in deep 90s, early 90s, maybe even earlier. I'm not sure, but I believe it's uh, 1991 or 1990. Um, and it's for me, this is a harvester. This is the biggest piece of software that, that you can get. You can build anything, like literally anything with uh, campaign cartographer. You can build worlds, you can build um, you can build outer space maps, you can build uh, characters, I'm sorry, characters. You can build um, fantasy maps, modern maps, anything that you want you can build in, um, in Campaign Cartographer and the additional products, so Fractal Terrains or um, what are the other ones? Um, the Dungeon Designer, the City Designer, Dioramas, Perspectives, Cosmographer, and so on and so on. Uh, you can build anything in Pro Fantasy, but I did mention it in one of the previous videos where I'm, where I'm building map. Campaign Cartographer's uh, manual is over 1,000 pages long. It's it's enormous. It's it's so hard to get into this program that not many do. It's not extremely pricey. It's um, I would say that it's pretty okay for the, what you get, um, but um, but the amount of time that you have to spend to learn it is enormous. It's sadly based on uh, on an AutoCAD program, so a program for architects. 
and it shows. I use campaign cartographer for my city maps and honestly I have no idea how I managed to get to the level or the level of knowledge on which I can do it actually because it's it's really an enormous piece of software but if you have the time if you have the time I really really would say that this is probably the biggest and baddest piece of software you can get now something pretty new relatively new is mapforge now mapforge software is software that allows you to jumble up assets together and if i would say that it's uh, known for something it's known mainly for um for uh, a huge array of assets that it has access to it was based on a kickstarter five years ago or something like that uh, and it went pretty well um enough well that uh, people really joined in and uh, you got a lot of things that are not accessible in different types of uh different types of uh software i don't think this ship is an actual asset i think that was drawn in a different in a different place uh but you do have uh, access to uh time of day you have access to hue saturation contrast which is very important trust me Software pieces that don't have the HL, HLS um, co uh, controls that don't allow you to change hue, saturation, or lightning, or brightness, or contrast, they are not worth your time, honestly. It's uh, if you are considering um, considering cartography as a honest hobby, or you think that you will uh, spend some time, real some some real time in uh, in this hobby. You will want all the fun things that are uh, that are included. So you will want to control your assets. You will want to control the shadows. You will want to control the colors. You will want to control the angles. You will want to control a lot of different stuff that a lot of softwares and apps sadly don't allow you. Again, this could be a problematic UI. Notice that um, if you only get part of your screen for the map itself and choosing from this list might be yeah might be problematic um but but yeah map uh, map forge is definitely definitely worth uh worth checking out uh, the license for map forge currently costs 48 bucks and can be purchased here let's see where we can purchase it here it is yeah so we get uh we get access to higher version of uh, of mapforge software so above 50 pixel per grid per grid that's 50 pixels per grid it's really low so um so it's probably or if you can see the comparison on this page um this is definitely something that i would rather have than than the low end um than the low end version and you have a whole lot of different um, different creators that create assets for MapForge. So let's click on a random one, uh, Map Alchemist. Um, we'll go into SG Furniture and see what we got here. In SG Furniture, we'll have, for example, um, tables and some sofas and so on and so on. It's it looks okay. I, I think I didn't ever use MapForge because of the because of the cost that it comes with it. So not only you have to have the software, but you also have to have a lot of different assets that you are interested in, and that's that's a little bit of a bummer. It's a little bit too pricey for me. Next up, we have Arkenforge. And um, if you've ever seen any other of my videos, you will know that I use Arkenforge uh, as my as my basic map making uh, tool. It's also an in-person VTT, so it's not exactly just a map making tool. It's used to make maps, but it's also used to make uh, running the game easier. And it's also uh, meant to be projected on a TV screen or whatever else. And it also has uh, SF, uh, so sound um uh, module and component in it and scopedia module and so on and so on it also can be animated um and also allows you to import uh stuff and it also has science fiction assets and so on and so on so it's one of the bigger bigger players for me this is one of the bigger players in uh in the cartography uh market um there's an enormous amount of assets an enormous amount of uh, things you can buy with 
uh, with Arkham Forge, you will need uh, the software and afterwards you can input your own uh, assets, your own images. There's two bundles right now. There's the Fantasy Essentials bundle and Science Fiction Essentials bundles. Um, both of these come with the tool itself that allows you to map and you get the either science fiction assets, the basic science fiction assets, or the basic fantasy assets uh, that come with it. For many people, this is enough actually for uh, to map a, a good map. Uh, for others, it's not enough. Um, from my experience, we are again very greedy creatures, so we always want more. Uh, we always want more assets, and we always want more things from which we can create. So, uh, yeah. Um, and besides that, they also have a marketplace that are um, you can buy the content from Arkham Forge packs. So, if, for example, if you want to build an underwater temple of uh, of some sorts, there's an official pack that's called Underwater, I believe. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's called Underwater, uh, and it's actually on sale right now. And in the underwater uh, pack, you will find things that allow you to. There's 172 objects, and they allow you to build stuff like uh, stuff like this. Uh, so pretty. Now we got Shmeep, Sh Shmeppy, uh, or Shmeep, Shmeppy. Yeah, I think it's Shmeppy. Um, it's Oh, I didn't mention the cost of Arkham Forge, sorry. So when it comes to Arkham Forge, it's a one-time uh, sale. So you buy the software and it's yours and you get a commercial license to use it. As opposed to uh, Shmeppy, uh, software that is uh, also a VTT, as Arkham Forge is a in-person VTT. So is Shmeppy. Shmeppy is a, a VTT that works online you just get a url and you can send the link to your friends to join you uh, in your um, in your game um it's again I, I'm, I was wondering if i shouldn't put it in the low fidelity map generators but it's bigger you can prepare your map as a moment you don't have to spend time learning to use it because it's really that this is simple um you can use it on a mobile device and uh, you basically have an instant sketch uh, with uh, with this tool. Now this is something new, if I remember correctly. Uh, it's not uh, it's not something that's been on the market for a longer time. I don't think that it will. Um, I don't think that it will it will shake the market enough because the styles that you can see over here and the pricing it's not that attractive, honestly. Um, but yeah, I mean it, the more. Uh, the more pieces of software there are on the market, the better. And from the big stuff, the last thing that I got is Tailspire, which is, again, enormous. Uh, Tailspire allows you to uh, build, but also play. Uh, it's fully 3D. It blends the classic, uh, it blends the classic style of D&D uh, or other fantasy games. Uh, so you have dice, you have minis that you move and they have their own physics. Um, with the digital world, which is pretty dope and amazing, if you ask me. So everything that you see here right now on the screen, it's built, as you can see right here. It, you have a, you have a set of assets, and you can use it uh, during during your build process. Um, there are some drawbacks because for me, this is one of the this this, this is potentially the best experience that you can get from a, uh, from a map making software because. It doesn't pretend to be reality. It doesn't pretend to be. Uh, um, it doesn't pretend to create a game of itself. You still have these minis, and they don't break immersion. Everybody understands that this is a game, but it's very, very uh, multi-dimensional. Uh, sadly, uh, if I remember correctly, um, players do need to have their own uh, their own copies. Um, and that is a pretty pretty big bummer because that means that there are multiple people that would need to buy it in order to in order for it to work. Uh, so it's not like you can just send a link to someone and that someone jumps in. That someone will have to have uh, the the software also. And again, that's a real bummer because this is potentially the best uh, gaming experience of a virtual tabletop that you can get. Um, I really, really want to play this in uh, VR goggles sometime, um, holding physical, non-physical dice. That would be really, really, uh, really something. 
Okay, now uh, the last part, or the before last part, uh, almost last part in front of us. So 3D generators and uh, 3D tools. First one would be the very, 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 very popular Dungeon Alchemist. An enormously successful Kickstarter that created this tool and um, en enchanted an amazing amount of people with uh, with their vision, including me. I I do sometimes use and generate some stuff with Dungeon Alchemist if I really don't have any time and I need something very, very basic. Dungeon Alchemist really allows you to do that, although their generation of files are slightly problematic because they generate quite a... Uh, uh, reasonably <laughs> sized files um, when you when you finish a map but you do have the possibility to fiddle with objects you do have the possibility to mix styles uh, it's really really something you don't have any option to import files sadly so that's uh, that's that generally you will get programs you will get um, you, we will see many programs that base their premise and their idea on this exact concept now it costs 160 slots so that would be like um, maybe 30 bucks probably um, so it does cost something next up we have uh, wild shape wild shape pro is a map editor and vtt uh, similarly you will have to have uh, um, a user uh, license and a DM license and the idea is pretty pretty uh, consistent with what we saw earlier so you build basically uh, um, from pre-made objects from pre-made uh, assets you build uh, you build a 3d dungeon and you can play in it I didn't put it in the big stuff because it is still in early access I'm not sure how it's gonna work later so it is in 3d generators Tailspire we uh, did actually see as the as the um, as the VTT potential VT, VTT uh, I didn't mention that it costs 90 slots so around maybe 15 uh, to 20 bucks uh, you can see how it works also on their on their web page realm engine is the next uh, piece of software it does look very promising although it's in early access for one year right now so I'm starting to lose my hope for this tool um, but I did notice that there's a alarming big amount of tools that are um, that are in early in early access uh, all the time uh, dear developers there is a moment when you have to say it's done and uh, pushing out a program that is in early access in internal early access is not a way to communicate with your with your fan base it's not something that makes me trust you and it's not something that makes me want to uh, buy into the game or uh, un consider it even something that I would like to try in the future if it's in early access for for well basically what a, a year two years three years that's that's problematic for me so uh, just finish your goddamn products <laughs> easy to say when you don't do it um, this is also considered to be a future VDT you will notice that there's a similarity again the the library of assets on the right side and uh, some additional tools on the left side it's pretty pretty similar to tailspire that we saw a little bit uh, earlier next game game master engine um which is again one year in early development very similar story um this time we have unpainted mini minis on the uh, on the slideshow over here it's free to play or if you want the gm edition so uh the edition for people that want to gm in it so this will work also as a vtt at 180 slot so around 30 to 40 bucks right now um not the cheapest not the priciest that you can get um i don't think i like the style it's a bit it, it's scrubbing a bit of low poly uh low polygon um, type of art the amount of assets also not something that i think is yet worth uh, worth the money make dungeons make dungeons is supposed to be there in june 2023 it's even more like uh isometric rpg game um i already see some problems over here so for example if you uh if you check out over here you have fireball or hold person so it's a dnd content 
Uh, I can already say that this will be uh, restricted to the open game content, which is a problem because nearly no one plays in, uh, with the uh, with the general SRD rules of Dungeons and Dragons. So it will be a problem at some point uh, unless you got an option to um, to add your uh, own homebrew. But if so, are you willing to add? All the spells from Santa's Guide to Everything, for example. That's yeah. It's not not something that I would consider. Um, uh, not something that I would consider interesting. Uh, these tools include a map generator, pre-written scripts for optimization, 5e fantasy settings, and many adventures that are already inside. Okay. Next up, we got um, what do we got here? Battle map with double P. This is very interesting because this is a 3D generator or 3D map builder that runs in your browser. So, oh, it doesn't load. Yeah, it does take some time to load. Uh, it did it to me a couple of times already. Here it is. And I can hear my GPU fan starting to work right now because this page is pretty hefty. But if you, uh, if you look around, it's pretty, pretty interesting and pretty dope that it works in your browser. Obviously, we don't want to play in a, in a windmill or whatever else. We want to add some objects of our own. Let's add uh, some trees, for example. We can add a log over here. And uh, we can see that to place objects or select a button with the hold left click and paint objects. Yeah, we could do that. We could also add some rocks and we can spin them. We can, I believe, if we put them down with holding one of the buttons, they will change their size. Oh, Rays of God over here. I don't know if you see it. Yeah, you do. Um, so E and Q are rotating. A, S, D, nothing. F changes the visual randomizes there's a lot of things you can do in this and afterwards you can um, you can either screenshot it or you can save it somewhere like upload or take a snapshot like over here so it's pretty pretty interesting especially if it runs in uh, in your browser this might be something very useful if you have a uh, uh, um, if you have a situation when you want to generate something 3D to show to your players uh, some more visuals, I wouldn't say that it's good for playing anything, but yeah, it's it's free and it's there to use, so there's nothing stopping you. Flowscape is uh, is a curious case because Flowscape is, um, I think Flowscape deserves all the credit for every other 3D generator or app that is meant to build uh, fantasy worlds, because Flowscape was there years ago <laughs> and I actually tried to use it a couple of times. I do have it. I tried to use it a couple of times and um, the the general uh, UI of this software is very similar to software that you'll find in different 3D generators and it's also the same thing that made me uh, think that yeah it's it's not for me. Uh, but you can generate things like this. This is this is freaking amazing. Uh, problem is that there's not much you can do with it later. You can you can create a video of it, or you can export it as a as a video if you if you really try hard. Um, but it's not exactly a, a map making software uh, per se. Still, it's it's really cheap. I think it costs like I don't know maybe ten bucks, maybe five bucks. Uh, it's there from 2019. Ten bucks, uh, 2019. So four years right now, three years right now. Um, and as said, it's kind of like the grandfather of other 3D generators. Now we have Dragon Map Maker. Dragon Map Maker is one of the uh, the children or the grandchildren of, uh, of Flowscape. Uh, it's similar to Dungeon Alchemist or others that I will show you in a second. Uh, as you can see over here, it's the style is pretty... Um, it's, again, it's not my style. Again, you have on the right side, you have the library assets and the left some tools. Uh, each generator and each tool has a slightly different approach to it, but you will notice that there's really patterns that are 
um, that are pretty repeatable. I think that I don't think I fancy in Dragon Map Maker is the way in which you have to swap between the editing layer and the actual visual layer of how things work. So if you check this here, um, you got to go into change mode uh, and do stuff. Object team pool, change mode. Now you produce something and now we go back and update for it to load. Not something that I fancy, honestly. Uh, although one thing that does make Dragon Map Maker different from other generators is the fact that they are also very outdoorish. So it's not like you generate only rooms, but you can also generate or create very interesting 3D uh, visuals of cliffs or wilderness or water or beaches or anything else. So that's definitely, definitely worth uh, worth um, worth thinking about. They did close their Kickstarter. I'm not sure if they're on sale yet. I think they're only um, they are in beta right now. Uh, so it's probably accessible only for people that support it, but it will be. Uh, soon, I think we will see it on the on the market. Neverending Dungeon is uh, again very similar history to uh, to Dungeon Alchemist or to Dragon Map Maker. So a 3D generator thingy that allows you to create uh, 3D dungeons. Mainly, this one allows you also to create um, kind of like stories or narratives or campaigns even with pre-generated set of what you can find in which places we did see that Don John I think uh, uh, or one of the other generators did manage to pull that off that they also gave you information about what you can find in which room and uh, what's inside the treasure box and what traps you have and so on and so on so over here you will have a similar story additional monsters that can be created um, and you can see how uh, that it also is what is interesting now it's not only fantasy it can also be cyberpunk or science fiction or whatever uh, or whatever else and it also can be printable it's easy to print and um, and that's that. They also had a Kickstarter. Now they're on Indiegogo. Um, I didn't get my beta key yet. I think they're going to be shipped later this year. Not sure. As mentioned, there's a lot of these programs right now. So I bet there's another program somewhere floating somewhere around. Um, uh, somewhere around that, that is on Kickstarter right now. Another one that was kickstarted was Chronos Builder. Um, uh, I do have Chronos Builder. And I think that's... It's not as good as Dungeon Alchemist yet. Uh, I do hope that they will. Um, I do hope that they will um, up their game because I do have high hopes for these for this uh, for this specific generator. Mainly because it had a very science fictiony vibe, and that's not something that is popular. That is interesting. Most people build fantasy maps, but even in fantasy maps, there's a lot of ways in which you can use science fiction assets and they fit really, really good. Like for example, the tank that you saw before a second, real good. Uh, I also think that um, Chronos Builder has a good potential because it also allows you to build outdoors, which is also, also pretty nice. But I don't think that they added all the assets that you see over here right now. Um, again, you can go to the Kickstarter campaign. Probably they have an go go so you can probably join still if you are late to the party. We're nearing the end. Uh, now we have Black Box Map Maker. Uh, it's not common that creators call their tools uh, by what they are actually, the map maker. Uh, I'm happy that this uh, creator, this developer, decided that um, that he wants to focus on this specific thing because this is this is good. This is if you focus on something, you you are able to strive for perfection in that thing. Uh, but again, it does look very very similar to everything else we've seen today. So um, there's not much that I see. Oh, well, let's pause here for a second. Do you see this little element over here? The same you will find in Dragon Map Maker, the same you will find in, um, in Dungeon Alchemist, the same you will find in their Grand Parent, so in Flowscape, the same way in which you can edit a 3D object. That's fine, although I will tell you from the top, this is not something that is UI friendly. It's it's not. It's uh, You will have to spend a lot of time fiddling with these maps if you want to make them uh, work good. They do, these programs tend to tell you that they don't have, uh, they don't have, they don't need you to have any artistic 
uh, skills or experiences, I would say that's not true. <laughs> they need you to have some uh, taste, some some idea for what you want to build, some idea of colors, how they blend together or not, uh, some idea about mapping in general. So if you decide to go the route of a 3D map generator, and honestly, I do think it's the future because I do really hope that in the future we will play in uh, virtual reality uh, online games. So we will have goggles and we'll be able to see all this so, and, the, and the GM will be narrating things. Um, so I think that this is the future. But if you go this route, be prepared to learn a lot and, and be patient. Be, you, you will need a lot of patience to make these objects and these maps look like they look on the videos. Remember that these are made by the creators. They know what they are doing. And I bet they, I bet it took them a lot, a lot of time. Okay. Now we got um, something that's uh, it's advertising itself right now. It's very promotional engines of this program is are very uh, active on different on different places on Facebook, on Reddit, and others. Uh, Manner is called a storytelling engine and. If, you, if you've heard me a little bit earlier, you've heard that I'm not a big fan of things that are used for maps and for something and for something. It's um, focus on one thing first and and uh, finish up uh, later. So this is again our VTT plus map generator. It's supposed to be uh, it, it's supposed to be something new and it does look. I must say that it does look slightly different than the flowscape um, than the flowscape. Grand grandchildren, um, I'm a slightly, slightly afraid that there's just too much things over here, too much things happening, and that it will focus on uh, this. Um, that it will focus on characters and their place in the world instead of the world itself. Um, it will boil down to how many assets you can have, how many how much flexibility it gives to you i think it's worth noticing without doubt uh, i'm very impressed by the wilderness very impressed um, i'm very impressed also by the lightning system over here by the perspective it's something in my opinion very very much worth noticing uh, how much light works and how much light means in our games we will discuss the topic of light during one of the episodes uh, so yeah it's it's worth uh, adding to your wish list or your uh, follow it follows list if you are uh, so inclined next up we have uh, the RPG engine uh, which is a low poly generator which I honestly don't like myself but I understand that there's a lot of people that do dig this style and find this style uh, fun and find the style something that they want to try out same deal as usual so we got our library assets on the right side we got some additional options on the left side um, the main difference over here would be the uh, the strangeness of the assets um, but again you can see the way in which you shift objects are the same flowscape uh, thingy um, they do promise you our character creation custom tokens uh, the integration with Hero Forge, I believe that this will make a lot of people very excited because I know a lot of people um, working with Arcan with uh, Hero Forge uh, for their games. They promise everything is easy. I don't trust them to be honest, but <laughs> hey, it's uh, it's it's not a review episode. Um, hopefully, this is something that will. Uh, also track with some I think younger people mostly might be interested in it uh, the RPG engine costs 75 dollars so that would be around again maybe like uh, 15 to 20 uh, 15 20 bucks um, limitless possibilities create your own world um, it doesn't say I feel that it doesn't say how many uh, how many licenses you would have to buy I'm afraid that it's going to be the same deal. So not only does the GM have to buy the game, but uh, also the all the players uh, that you want to play with. Last thing, RPG stories. Uh, I think that's again, it's there's there's this zeitgeist or uh, or this trend right now to create 
um, programs that you can build a map or generate a map. And additionally, on top of that, you can create a whole story for your uh, for your game. So I honestly wouldn't ever use that. <laughs> I, I barely use pre-written pre -written one shots as they are. So um, pre-written stories in a whole dungeon, I don't think I would do it. But to each their own. Um, let's see if they have a video of a gameplay video. Let's see. Yeah, so we see that this is again a very similar uh, concept, but you don't have this limited grid on which you are building your uh, on which you are building your uh, your map. So this is a good thing. From all the things that I've shown you today, I think this one might be the most promising or interesting. Um, after my experiences with Dungeon Alchemist and Chronos Builder, I'm kind of hesitant to consider. Uh, three world builders or map makers um, super trustworthy uh, I've noticed that they are they've done their part but the flexibility that you have with those tools are negligible uh, I do hope that this tool will be slightly different um, the fact that it doesn't base your map on the small uh, small patch of lead as other 3d generators do is already something that is my in my opinion pretty uh, pretty awesome uh, so yeah that's that's uh, that's pretty cool um, exports 2d video 3d printing files 3d printing files that's 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 the future uh rpg stories quest file the quest file is again something that slightly makes me a little worried because i would really rather them to focus on making a great 3d world builder cartographer tool instead of building a all-in-one i'm not sure if that's gonna work basically um yeah so this is a general breakdown of uh, dozens of, uh, of map making tools. As you can see, I'm not familiar with half of those. Um, it's impossible to use all of those tools. My hopes are that during this video, you've, saw, you've seen something that catched your eye and maybe, maybe uh, made you think, hey, this is a tool that I want, um, that I want to use. Um, I do, however, would like to um, point out that I do have my favorites for a few things. Uh, I wouldn't be myself if I wouldn't try to recommend something uh, in the end of the uh, in the end of the video. So, what I would like to recommend is for um, for general uh, city building, and potentially for those of you that find uh, that you will want to build bigger maps in the future and you really want to delve into the hobby really want to go take a deep dive into the hobby uh, for those of you i think that uh campaign cartographer might be the best choice uh i did mention that it has the highest learning curve ever ever it's uh i don't know why it's so hard to make the ui friendly for a user to make the experience of the user more uh, pleasant. Um, I didn't show you how uh, how it looks like in in, um, in campaign cartographer, uh, but it's it's really really uh, troublesome. Let's let's just look at one quick uh, quick video. Yeah. So listen to this. This is a short introduction to campaign cartographer tree for new users, and it lasts for thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. You have a command line down there. Um, you have your assets on the left side, but they don't look anything like assets. This is how it looks like when you're starting to build over here. You have a whole lot of, uh, of uh, commands. You have a whole lot of um, UI uh, elements on the top of the of the of the panel over here. Um, many of these demand multiple clicks from you. Multiple, like an enormous amount but in the end you finish with something like this uh 
campaign cartographer is a very um, is a very very tough case because on one hand side it's the most robust and most amazing program you can get and on the other hand side if you don't want to spend two years of your time learning how to use it you might be better off uh, searching for a different program but for city maps this is hands down uh, hands down the best uh, that you can uh, that you can find um, next up let's see if they have a city designer yeah so city designer gallery view um, they're not the best in, in marketing also the web page all looks really really <laughs> uh, really old and, and retro uh, this is not something that I would use in any game of mine never uh, but they have for example this whole symbol set that looks really good and I promise you I've made really nice maps with uh, with campaign cartographer uh, you're gonna have to have to believe me um, next up for uh, for regional and content maps I use Wonderdraft and I do recommend Wonderdraft. Wonderdraft is a tool uh, that is, maybe it's not the most intuitive, but the amount of things you can do here are, um, the, creating a basic continent map is really great. It's really good. It's really uh, easy. Um, if you want to make beautiful continent maps, that will take time. That will take your effort and your time and your will. Uh, but for basic maps, maps like this that you see on the screen right now um, I would consider this a basic map you can do this really quick um, you would need some knowledge about world building and things but you can learn how to do this real quick in one evening you can build a pretty neat uh, pretty neat uh, continent map um, you are able to do that also in campaign cartographer but I do understand that most people will not get campaign cartographer it's too pricey and and too hard to learn um and for um for battle maps my pick would be my pick would be arkham forge uh it's slightly uh, it, it's not as cheap as dungeon draft dungeon draft is 20 bucks master's toolkit is 20 bucks is 35 bucks unless you hunt it on promo or a sale or something like that and in that case, you can get it for as cheap as 20 bucks. The one of the main things that I like about Master's Toolkit is the fact that um, one of the main facts that I like about the Master's Toolkit is the fact that um, importing things into it is really easy and building with it is again really easy. They have this unique UI, especially in the open beta, uh, which is accessible for all. They have this UI that is different from other types of software, but it's a different in, um, in a good way. It's more user oriented and less developer oriented. You can see that and you can talk with the devs on the Discord um, that they really do think a lot about how to make things easier and how to give the most, the biggest amount of tools to the user. The biggest problem with Arkham Forge would be actually the amount of things you can do. Because learning, again, learning all the things that you can do in Arkham Forge takes time. And learning all the all the shortcuts and that you can uh, create um, uh, keyboard shortcuts for every single action if you want. That's pretty amazing, but it does take time to learn so. So, um, so yeah, the, the, this unique uh, UI of, uh, of Arkham Forge is something that I consider the most advantageous of this piece of software uh i think that they have the most mm, they, they offer the most uh when it comes to uh to development and to the future uh of your map making if you are making battle maps that's a private opinion and um again it's uh it's up to you um one more thing from this piece of software is that the ease of importing your own assets, the structuring, and then setting it up, it, it does count. It makes things... Uh, it, in the beginning, the, the learning curve is slightly steep, but it, it gradually stops. And once you start making maps and you learn things, uh, it's really okay. And I'm thinking, I think you will still need some time to learn about it, but not as much 
as uh, as time you would spend to uh, make your other maps from other pieces of software look uh, look as good as you can get from uh, from the master's toolkit. Phew, that was a long list. And as you can see, the choices are not easy and the choice will not be fast, I imagine. But I think that by now you should have a general idea of what are the things you can and should consider before you start mapping. In the next episode, I'll start with discussing some issues with creating your own signature style, but we'll also delve into the world of searching, finding, buying and making assets of your own. <laughs>